Hello, and welcome to another video here on White Whale Gaming. I am your host, Whale, and today we are going to be giving the formal introduction to the White Whale Gaming channel over the Navigating background the of the version 2.8 Spiral Abyss. The Blessing of the Abyssal Moon revolves around characters staying on the field to get bonus attack percent and unleashing true damage shockwaves when at maximum stacks when they use charge attacks. So let's get into it. This is not my first clear of the Spiral Abyss for this rotation. I was attempting to record this earlier on my first run, but my computer crashed and instead of attempting to wait until I could get a recording to succeed, I decided to clear the abyss and simply rerun it for the video. Let's see if we can get through this without a crash this time. My computer is relatively was relatively old tech even when it was built, and it is even older over two years later now. I'm in the process of replacing it with a more powerful machine from Apex Gaming, but with the delays on obtaining parts in today's day and age, that could be anywhere from two to six more weeks. It has already been two weeks into the estimated four to eight weeks. Now, let's get into this. First things first, White Whale Gaming is not intended to be and never was intended to be a Genshin Impact channel. Despite the name White Whale implying whaling on a gacha game, it is in fact a reference to Xenoblade Chronicles X. The Xenoblade Chronicles series is another series that will for sure appear on this channel, although just like Genshin Impact, it will not be the sole focus of this channel. Solidified. White Whale Gaming at its core is a variety gaming channel that focuses on gameplay with a more narrative direction and a focus on story and characters as opposed to focus on endless gameplay grind loops. So if you're looking for a new Fortnite or Warzone or CSGO content creator, White Whale Gaming might not be for you. But if you are looking to experience games with more narrative direction as opposed to more gameplay inspired, well, multiplayer gameplay in de derived content, you will enjoy what I have coming down the pipeline. In addition to variety Genshin Impact videos whenever a, a new update provides content for me to cover, I have plans already in the works to cover the new Xenoblade Chronicles 3 game at launch, after which I will follow up with Let's Plays of the first two games in the series, although I'm undecided as to whether or not they will be separate from each other, or done side by side due to the nature of those games as being parallel stories happening in different universes at roughly the same point in time. I'm actually leaning towards the latter as that sounds like a unique way to explore these two games. Unfortunately due to Xenoblade 2 having significantly more content than Xenoblade 1 in order to have their main stories line up better with each other, the Xenoblade 1 content might wind up with less frequent uploads, as Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will likely have longer stretches of side questing in between main story arcs. Other series I have already planned in the works is since I own a Wii U, and my capture card simply requires an HD connect and Emma. HDMI connection to function, one thing I would like to do is to see if my current capture card can capture footage from my Wii U and get a Xenoblade Chronicles X Let's Play in Motion as out of the three Xenoblade Chronicles games, X is the game with the least amount of content available from what I have seen at least. Unfortunately, I do not know if it will be possible to record from the gamepad, 
so I will simply have to describe what is happening on that screen, which in Xenoblade Chronicles X effectively functions as a map. Aside from that, I do have plans to cover si si up series and upcoming games such as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at time of launch in a co-op let's play fashion with a couple of friends of mine one who has had a youtube channel for a bit and one who texted the group chat of my friends just this morning that he was creating a new channel both of their channels are focused more around magic the gathering with the one who's had his channel for a while focusing around clickbait pack openings if you're into that and the other aiming to be more gameplay oriented each of us will be choosing a different of the three Scarlet and Violet starters, Solidify. with myself choosing Sprigatito, our new grass cat, the birds come. continuing my recent trend towards grass starters over my usual pick of the fire. In addition to that, I have plans of covering the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at launch, and covering the first Breath of the Wild prior to that. So as we get more information on release dates for that game, I will begin planning out when I will play the first Breath of the Wild on the channel. What a nuisance! Allow me! Beyond that, other games that I am looking forward to playing slash planning on playing on my channel are Hogwarts Legacy on PlayStation 5. That is a completely original experience set within the wizarding world of Harry Potter, so those of you who are not fans of how J.K. Rowling has taken the series, or of J.K. Rowling in general, do not have to worry about that game being, well, it's basically as far removed from her as you can get within the Harry Potter universe due to it happening well before the start of even Albus Dumbledore's story, I'm, and I am excited to be able to use some unforgivable curses on, unsus on unsuspecting enemies. And the last game that I currently have planned to play at some point on the channel is Elden Ring. I will be playing this on PC, so it will not be starting prior to the arrival of my new Apex gaming machine, as I barely trust this box I'm on now to run something like Genshin Impact. Newsflash, it can't, well, barely, and on the lowest graphical settings. This box was optimized based off of my dad's specifications when he built his PC a year or so before I built mine, and I chose to copy his specs because that fit my budget. But if I were to build my own PC now, which I do not want to do again, I've done it once, that is more than enough for me, I would get something bigger and better. So once that is here, I will coordinate with another one of my IRL friends, who is a veteran and, dare I might even say, expert at From Software Games. As such, having him being able to help me out on PC with Elden Ring's lack of crossplay would be a great boon to me, a first time From Software player in navigating this notoriously difficult game. Take flight. And as we know with the difficulty of From Software's offerings, it will likely be a lethal good time for viewers and a lethal bad time for me. So if you're looking forward to seeing a From Software game player noob, get his butt handed to him repeatedly by the toughest content gaming has to offer, then you have that to look forward to. But as I said, with it requiring my new gaming PC to run, it will be at very least two to six more weeks before I even start considering recording Elden Ring gameplay. I will have order. Looks like I went too far. 
and depending on how that Elden Ring playthrough goes, it could boost the chances of seeing other From Software titles such as the Demon Souls remake and the Dark Souls games on this channel. Perhaps even Sekiro and Bloodborne as well. Aside from that, other plans I have include other series that I enjoy, such as Mass Effect, Dragon Age, and Diablo. In particular, the original Mass Effect trilogy in their remastered Legendary Edition state. Behold, the and, of course, the Black Sheep of the series, which I love anyway, Mass Effect Andromeda. The game received a lot of crap on release for its buggy animations and awkward visuals, but has since gotten a lot better, and hopefully EA has learned their lesson about gutting their tried and true series is to make a terrible looter shooter that is attempting to be a quote quote destiny killer. Note, if you're if you go into something trying to kill the king of that genre, you're gonna fail pretty hard. Don't be an EA, don't kill your existing game series to try and chase over a fad like looter shooters. And with, and with regards to Diablo, in particular, I intend to cover Diablo 2 Resurrected and Diablo 4 on the channel. Why not 3, you ask? Well, quite simple. I do not think 3 is a bad game, but it was my dad's game. He played it every day from the day of its launch until the day of his death. In fact, when he went into the hospital the night before he passed, he still had a botting service playing the game for him. A botting service which I shut down at my mom's request in order to not have it draw too much power and waste too much energy while he was away. His passing was sudden. Well, it wasn't as sudden as it probably should have been. But as such, I will not touch Diablo 3 with a 10-foot pole mainly due to the fact that it would be strange to at least not even see the bot running. I have left that game in the past, and even though I personally do not have any big disagreements with how the gameplay functions, I will not be going near that game as it simply unearths bad memories that I do not want to have when I am trying to enjoy gameplay. And, in addition to that, I have vast libraries already installed on my PS5 and Nintendo Switch systems. I have less, but still a decent amount of games currently on my PC, even if I am not exactly the most able to take advantage of it with my current machine's performance levels. Emerge. Right now. And have vaster wish lists on both this PS5 and Switch to provide content for a while to come. Busted. I am also open to recommendations gotcha. of games I should play for viewers, as long as they are narrative driven as opposed to relying on multiplayer for their content. And am looking to, when finances allow, add to my gaming repertoire with a Xbox Series system, as well as acquiring capture cards for more vintage systems like the Nintendo Wii, which also has GameCube backwards compatibility, and the PlayStation 2, which also has PlayStation 1 backwards compatibility with the Come new with return nature. of PlayStation 3 games through the higher tiers of the new Game Pass, well, PlayStation Plus subscription service on PlayStation. That will give me access to the entire PlayStation family 
Should I choose to upgrade when that service becomes more worth the money than it is now? Also, in regards to the whale aspect of this channel with Gotcha Gaming, I will right cover now. all right Genshin here. Impact updates as we are given them. Busted. And we'll continue to do so until the game's conclusion, whether that be when it reaches the end of its story, or when or when Hoyoverse deems it not profitable enough to continue development. Right now, emerge. Right here. Time for a light show. As for other gacha game titles, I am interested in trying out titles such right as Mihoyo's other offerings in Honkai Impact 3rd right and eventually in Zenless Zone Zero, as well as Tower of Fantasy and Withering Waves when they go live. I am not interested in playing any betas. I want to play a polished right game. As for the requirement as for the requirements for me playing other gacha titles on the channel, it must be playable on at least PC, if not on console as well. Note that I will not wail on just any gacha game, I will wail exclusively on Genshin Impact. I cannot afford to wail on more than one game. So with that, note that I will not be free to play on these other games, but I will look for the best bang for your buck sort of deal with those games, such as Welkin Moon Battle Pass on Genshin Impact, that sort of equivalent. And I just exited again because I'm playing on PlayStation 5, and the attack button is the same as the cancel button on PS5. So we will keep con progressing into the last chamber of floor 11, as we are about done with the channel right now. direction right. discussion. Right don't know why I deployed Yaimiko's gotcha. turrets, they don't here. do anything to this guy. Fire hazard! Gather Keep that Jean shield up. Busted. Gotcha. Time for a light show. Stabilize. Let's rope this guy like our name Sandy Cheeks. Gotcha. Are about to get dicey. The field is lit. And let's keep beating on this guy. We got plenty of time for the second half. Switch over to Yalon. Use those breakthrough barbs with the improved buff, and he's down. This chamber is not difficult, it's just annoying. Yay, I did it. And we're going to retry that. Would it be a lot easier if Kazuha's burst was closer? Quietly now. Game's up. Game's over. Fire hazard. Let's get this guy down quick. Here comes the fireworks. Going a burst at the end of her rotation. Refresh on the shield. Meteor. Gotcha. Busted. The field is lit. Let's keep walloping this guy. Quietly now. Gather. Alright. Wait 
for him to do this. Still have Zhongli shield. Zhongli shield is very important for you, as it will help. Gotcha. About to get dicey. And we, it, it will help keep her from getting interrupted, and her normal attack chain has a lot more power on the back end. <laughs> Okay, jellyfish, do your job. Keep Klee from going down. The wind knows me. Swirl them all together. Adorn my knight. team nice and healthy, which is what I needed. And, of course, we're spamming normal attacks of Klee at the end there, so we exit the Spiral Abyss on accident. Now for floor 12 of Whale Abyss. For this floor... Okay, yes, we want the Pyro DPS team on first half to deal with that Pyro cube. It is going to be Klee, Zhongli, Kazuha, and Bennett. Probably the most meta team you'll see Klee in, and probably the least meta team you'll see Bennett in. And now we have... Let's do a modified Eula here. Eula, Raiden, Shogun, Kokomi, and Miko. We will be crit fishing as no Rosaria boost. My Rosaria is 100% is crit rate, so 15% crit boost. And no double cryo. So it will just be my Eula's natural 53.3% but this chamber in particular likes to troll you with groups of hilly churl archers that have elemental reactions pre-built into them like overload and melt in addition to just a lot of big dumb shield hilly churls and a lot of churl Kazuha's burst is back, and no energy recharge is kind of nutty. Bennett burst. Jumpy Dumpty will help regenerate some energy for Bennett and Klee. And Klee's charge attack can actually knock around those lava trolls even easier than Jean's charge attack can. It has the highest poise damage of any attack in the game. Right now, right here. Right now. Crush! My Yaimino is C6, so those turrets hit like a truck. In fact, she is C6 refinement 5, so they hit extra like a truck. Let's pop our ult. Get our turrets down. Ride an ult. Shudder! Eula's cryo application is pretty poor, but it should work to clear the electro right buff here, off right of these now. guys. Right here. Nothing lasts forever. Vengeance Another will be Eula mine. Ult. That's what happens when you have Raiden and Eula in the same team. My Eula is C6, so we're getting double charge and start with a few stacks. And even with him regenerating health there, that was enough to more than enough to one-shot him. Chamber 2, this is going to be the Cryo Hippo right off the bat. Character Elemental Mastery will work wonders here because we are going to be getting constant melts on this guy. I hate it when he does this first. Chase him down, which is difficult when you're slowed. Decent for how short a window you have to attack on that attack. Stabilize. Get up Zhongli shield again in just the nick of time. We're not going to be able to swirl the element we want against the against a, against this guy ever because he's constantly imbued with cryo. He has a cryo aura that is strong enough it cannot be undone. We will sparks and splash him into his regen mode already. Gather. 
This is enough that two should break through his shield instead of the usual three, giving him even less health to worry about getting through once his shield is broken. More speed. Right now. Set the turrets. Get the ride and ult going. Probably should have done the ride and Edie first. Pop into the Kokomi ult to get everyone nice and healed up. Miko turrets again. Miko nuke. Miko turrets again. Uh, my Miko has also been mentioned earlier on Refinement 5 Kagura's Verity. More speed. Making her hard hits even harder. Freeze to the core. Crush. Let us cross swords. Inazuma shines eternal. That little ult had to be detonated early, unfortunately, or else I would have lost my Eula here. Kokomi ult to give whole team regen. This is actually the tougher side of the chamber just because of how tanky a level 98 ruined raider can be. Shine down. Let's see if we can finish this guy. Nope. We also got a crit fish on our Raiden and it did not look like we crit there. A lot of my characters do need better crit rates, but we are on the final chamber, so 20% energy recharge. I hate Stabilize. this chamber. Into the wind. I will have order. Meteor. Ultimate. She got her lock on off on us, so she is a lot tankier against us. And a lot heavier. And a lot more resistant to our pulls. Alright. I'm gonna finish this guy off before going to the mirror maiden. Because of just how annoying his cryo will be trying to move this girl. She is heavy enough when we are locked on to that Kazuha cannot pull her at all. No animo can really pull her when she's locked on to you. She gets a big defense boost as well. And, of course, she teleports just as Klee is actually getting off her charged attack. Drop my shield back up. Bennett burst, Klee burst. Let's show off that C4. Yep, the C4 did it. On to the last chamber. This boss works differently in the Abyss than it does in the Overworld. Since you are not allowed to have gadgets in the Abyss, the Ruined Serpent will not summon oozing concretions. Consequentially, Nothing meaning you forever. cannot stun the Ruined Serpent in Spiral Emerge. Abyss. Right now. Inazuma shines eternal. The Aimiko is particularly useful for this fight, as her turrets can still track and hit the Serpent underground. Emerge, right here. Let's keep him at full strength for maximum damage. <laughs> And he pops up on the other side right of the map, now. of course, so we'll simply right redeploy, because Guy has a pretty fast cooldown. Huh. Stop burrowing, you coward! Let me kill you! Now you shall perish! Illusion shattered! Stunned him somehow, don't know how, but will be mine. I was wrong about the cannot stun the ruined serpent in the abyss. Yeah. Eye for an eye. I believe he was already Come invulnerable on. underground right when the Eula detonation Crush. went off, unfortunately. But it doesn't matter. We clear it anyway. I'd still say easier than having to say face a Lego cube in the spiral abyss. And with that, we have reached the bottom of Spiral Abyss. We have gone over the purpose of the White Whale Gaming channel. 
I hope you are looking forward to at least some of the content I have lined up for the channel, if not all of it. If you like this video, leave a like and think about subbing to the channel. And as always, comments are welcome down in the comment section. And I will see you next time.